What's going on guys? My name is Jeremy and this is Jay Payne Woodworking. Today I want to show you guys how to turn a board with a crazy non-straight edge into a perfectly straight usable board without a joiner. You'll use a simple jig that I'm going to show you how to make and the table saw and get perfectly straight usable boards. So let's get at it. So I'm assuming you guys have bought lumber at least once in your life, and if you have, you understand the idea that getting a board that is perfectly straight on at least one edge can be a lot more difficult than what it would seem to be. So what do you do if you cannot get a perfectly straight board? Well, you need a flat reference face to make things that all fit together properly, or your measurements won't be correct. So usually you use a jointer. So the problem is, is joiners can be expensive and take up a lot of space. So if you have a small shop or a small budget, a joiner might not be the absolute best fit for your shop. So what do you do now? Well, here's your solution. This is a joiner sled for your table saw. What this does is this allows you to use this to slide through the table saw and give you a perfectly flat reference cut on your first cut of your board. After that, you can flip it over and get a perfectly straight edge along the fence. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to make one of these joiner sleds. Now I will warn you, I did use my CNC for a couple of the cuts, but you can use a router and a guide just as easy. I just used my CNC because I had the tool at hand. It was new to me at the time, so I was excited and wanted to use it. But I'm going to show you guys how to take a board like this one. As you can see, I exaggerated all the crazy curves on the bandsaw. And I'm going to show you how to get a flat board that is usable out of this piece without a joiner of any kind. And it's really quick and really easy. So let's get at it. Real quick guys, I want to show you something that I kind of added to the sled. After I did the initial build, I had used it a few times and I needed to use it for something a little different and I needed it to not use the fence. So I wound up adding this right here. This is some T-Track that rides inside the miter slot of the table saw and it worked really well that way. I did not include this in the build and there's a couple reasons. One. At the time, I honestly didn't think about it. And two, if you're doing this and making a longer um, joiner sled, so say a five foot or six foot joiner sled, I don't know that I would try to run a miter slot rail for something that long. Uh, you can, I guess, but it might be a little difficult to make sure that that full length, it is perfectly straight and that there's no catches in it or anything like that, so you have trouble pushing it through. So for that reason, I just wanted you guys to see this because 
I have used this for other projects since I initially built it and I didn't get the video edited and I didn't want people asking why it had a miter slot, but I'm going to show you how to use it with the fence. That way you don't have to have one on your particular sled and it will work just fine. I used it without it forever, but I needed it for a specific application that I couldn't use the fence on. So just wanted to update you on that, let you know. Let's get back at it. So one thing I really wanted to show as well is these markings here. And I just did this with some marker just so I know. But the reason you want to do this is you always want to reference the same face to the fence. And for that and to make sure I always did that, I marked these that just say two fence here. And also I marked on the board that it is a 12 inch wide jig. This means that if I set the fence to exactly 12 inches, then when I lift the blade, wrong way, there we go. As you can see, the blade is coming up with pretty much no gaps right along this edge here. And that means that we'll have a nice, perfect straight cut. So as you guys can see, I've got my board here. Now, again, this is really over-exaggerated. I just wanted to show kind of the premise of it and how well it works, no matter how crazy the curves in the board are. So this here is going to be our narrowest spot. One thing to keep in mind is if you have a board that say is this bad, you're only going to get as much material as from your narrowest spot to the narrowest spot to get perfectly straight on each edge. If you don't need this edge straight, it's not a big deal. You can still only do one. So the way you line this up is the edge of your board is where the cut will be. And you just simply make sure there is say an eighth of an inch of material underneath the board hanging off for the blade to cut through. And then you just clamp this into place. Using this Rockler T-Track and these Rockler clamps really makes this very, very quick and easy. There is other ways you can technically do it, but this I feel the most safe doing, and I don't feel like I have to worry about this being moved around or kicked back on me while going through the saw. So as you can see now, I have a perfectly straight edge along this side and I can simply just flip the board over and run this edge along the fence and get a perfectly straight board. All right guys, so there it is, a perfectly usable board out of what was pretty much scrap beforehand. Perfectly straight edges, ready to be glued up if needed, and it works great. I used this jig a lot. Uh, I, a friend of mine kind of suggested me making one. I wasn't sure about it. I made it, and now I use this thing all the time. Uh, you can make them larger, so you are limited by what size boards you can joint simply by the length and the width of the jig. So with this jig, it is 26 inches long by 12 inches wide. So I am limited to those sizes or smaller of boards that I can run on this particular jig. I will be making a larger one later on and that will give me more capacity. But at the same time, I don't wanna to go too wide because if I'm using say a six foot long by 20 inch wide jig, it might get a little bit more difficult to control the jig as it's going through the table saw by myself. If you have someone that can give you a hand, might not be as big an issue if you feel comfortable doing it by all means. It's just something I don't feel comfortable with by myself as I work by myself most of the time. But you can use this for longer boards for things like tabletops or whatever. So I hope you guys found this helpful. It's a great way to save money as well. I think you can build a bunch of these jigs for under a hundred bucks. The T-Track is not that expensive. I'll be honest, I don't remember what it costs. I will put it in the video somewhere over here. Yeah. And I will leave links to it below. And then you can buy a full sheet of MDF for say 40 bucks. It's a perfectly smooth surface. It slides well on the table saw and works great for these jigs. Uh, you can also do them out of plywood, whatever. The point is, is that you're not going to spend $600 on a joiner 
or not take up a quarter of your shop if you want to have a large joiner and you have a small shop. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see all the videos as they come out. Also, I will leave all the dimensions in this in the article that will be published along with it on jpaywoodworking.com. Check out the links below. Links for all my social media, Instagram, everything will be down in the description. So please go check that out. Leave me a comment what you guys think, what you'd like to see me build or review, whatever. I just love hearing from you guys. I'm really close to 10,000 subscribers and really want to hit it soon. It's kind of a milestone for me and been working hard for it. So I really appreciate the support. So I'm going to get back to work, guys, and I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Later.